Here we go. I want you to think ahead to three years in the future and thinking about your business, thinking about your digital sales and marketing. And you have two choices. Choice number one, you completely own your digital sales and marketing, meaning you're producing your own content, you're producing your own videos, you're doing all of your own messaging, being able to guide the creative and everything internally so that you own both aspects of sales and marketing from a digital perspective. Option two is that you have somebody else do it and you're reliant on an agency to write content, shoot video, help you with messaging, and, and really do all of your digital sales and marketing. So the question is, which do you want to be? So you might be asking, Chris, what does ownership of my digital sales and marketing really mean? So I'm glad that you asked, and let's talk about it. So when we talk about ownership, we mean having the skills internally in our organization to do all the things we need to do, okay? So what is, how does this play into digital sales and marketing? So we need to have the ability to write amazing content for our blog, for our website, for our sales enablement materials, for everything that comes out of our shop, our organization. We need to have the ability, the skill set internally to do that. Well, Chris, is it just content or do I need video? Yes, you need video too. Because again, we're talking about owning all of our digital sales and marketing. So you also need to be able to create great video. If we look at this from a they ask you answer perspective, we need to be able to create whatever it is that our buyers expect from us internally. So having great writing, having the ability to produce any type of content that we can, meaning video, written, all of these things internally at a pace that we set, right? So again, this is at a pace that we set. So if we want to produce 15 articles a week, hey, we can do that because we own it as opposed to in the previous models that you might've been in with a traditional agency, you only got so many articles, so many videos a week or a month. So additionally, let's think about other things that ownership means. So if you're here, it means that you also are using some sort of marketing automation, sales automation. You know us, we're gonna recommend HubSpot for most of our clients. And so you need people to actually manage that. You need to be able to look at your database. You need to be able to own your CRM not have somebody else talking to you about leads, not have somebody else talking to you about, you know, what web pages buyers have been looking at. You need the ability and the skills internally in your organization to do this if you're going to own your digital sales and marketing. So some of the common obstacles or fears or pushback that we hear when we talk to businesses about this is like, oh, this is going to cost way more. I really just, you know, I want to not think about this or, you know, it's going to cost me too much with full-time employees. And I just got to tell you that when you look at this from a long-term perspective, taking it in-house is going to save you money in the long-term. Taking it in-house gives you the control that you want as a business owner. It gives you the ability to surge when you need to surge and pull back when you need to pull back and know that it's your team that's in control of its own destiny, not somebody else. So we're talking about building your team now. That's right. We've gotten to the point where we need to build this team. And so what are those two main roles that we talked about earlier? That's right, content manager, videographer. So right now we're gonna talk about why we need them, where we find them, what are some of the skill sets that they need to have so that you can feel more comfortable as you go out and try to, try to hire, try to hire within and, and really make these roles come into reality in your organization. So let's start with the content manager. You might be saying, Chris, I don't need a content manager. Like we have multiple people that can write and we'll just, you know, we'll figure it out. Okay. Well, again, what happens when nobody owns an initiative? It goes to the land of initiative death, in essence, right? So if nobody owns it, it ain't gonna happen. So this content manager needs to be someone that you trust to execute the content side of the Ask You Answer, meaning they're gonna be skilled in interviewing. They're gonna be skilled in writing. They're gonna really learn and understand your organization and be able to bring that forth, okay? They're gonna hit the quantity level of written content that you need to have. They're going to ensure the quality is high. And you might be like, well, Chris, so now I need to find somebody that's smart in my space, that's also writer. No, 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 no. The beauty of the content manager position is they don't need to know anything about your organization when they start. They don't need to know Jack. What they need to be is incredibly curious. They need to be someone that can go interview people and learn. And as they're going through this interviewing and learning section, they're starting to find a tone from you, a tone from themselves, and starting to really write like your organization. And they're doing it because they're great at interviewing. So hopefully a light bulb is going off in your brain of like, well, where do I find these people that are great at interviewing? 
Here's the trick. They might not have graduated college as a marketer. They probably came from a journalism program. You know, as we see the age of digital media coming in and really taking over print media and even television, we have all of these journalism majors that are looking for work that's just not frankly out there. So guess what? These are our best content managers. These fresh out of school, really, really, really motivated to go get after it. These are the folks that you look for to be a perfect content manager for you. So what do they have again? They can interview, they're curious, they can write and they communicate, and most importantly, they fit in with your team. What don't they have to have? Industry experience, industry knowledge. Like those are two things they don't have to have. They don't have to have a marketing background even, or a sales background, okay? Curious, fit with your company, and that is going to make for like the right fit on your team, and it's gonna allow you to just get after it from your content perspective. Now, the next role is your videographer. And so guess what? The same stuff applies with respect to like, why do I need a videographer? Because if you don't have one, what's gonna to happen to video in your company? It's never gonna be a thing. It's gonna be something that we talk about, but never truly take action on. But so now you're thinking, well, what do I need from a videographer? Do I need a videographer that, you know, can go shoot live television, whatever? Like, no. You need someone that has really good knowledge of photography, has really good knowledge around the equipment that we've talked about you need to take video in-house. And most importantly, they need to be able to edit quickly, they need to be able to interview people, and they need to make your team feel comfortable on camera. And so that's like the hidden part of a videographer, is someone that can be behind the camera and really make you just feel like a rock star, even if you're struggling through shooting video. That's like the unspoken thing that you need on a videographer. So again, where do you find these folks? So there's a whole industry of these folks that might have been independent contractors, freelancers that are doing one-off things. And guess what? Some people love that and some people might be like, hey, I really want something more stable, something that I know what I'm doing every day and I always have work. And so there's a plethora of humans out there that have these skill sets. And it's as simple as writing the job posting for both of these roles and getting them out there into the universe. And believe me, you will have plenty of people apply for these jobs. So one of the other really important things that we sort of touched on already is just as we hire these new roles, like let's be looking for fit. Let's be looking, they need to make sure that they meet these core, like hard skill things for whether it be content or video. So they need to meet all that criteria, but really do they fit with you? You as the owner or as the sales leader, or as a marketing leader or as an operational leader, can you sit down with a content manager and have a really in-depth conversation to get really great written content produced? Can you work with that videographer in front of a camera and feel like they can pull all the stuff out of you that needs to get out and out to the world? If you don't feel that way, you're probably going down the path of making a bad hire because at the end of the day, these people need to be brought into working with senior leaders, with subject matter experts, and need to be able to really tap into the human side of those folks so that you get what's in their brains onto the screen or into articles. So I can't say it enough but fit and human dynamic for both of these roles are critical, as critical as their hard skills. <laughs>